Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Come and See video today at SSJ at Home. Our guest is uh, Cantor Greg Welch, uh, and uh, Greg is um, uh, joining us to talk to us a little bit about this liturgical ministry. Uh, Greg, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about how a person becomes involved as a cantor. Well, there are many different ways. Um, to be a cantor. Uh, well, in our church, uh, we have a music ministry and it's a group of people that includes um, the uh, choirs. Uh, so there's a, a few different choirs. Um, there are the, uh, the children's or family choir, which is the uh, typically the, well, what used to be the 1130 mass is now the 12 o'clock mass. And then there's a, a choir for the 930 mass. So those two choirs used to meet separately, um, you know, but these days with what's going on right now, everything is, is pretty much, you know, been put on hold. But uh, for the most part, to be a cantor, um, you know, you would just uh, send an email that you're interested to Donna, who runs the uh, music program for uh, the primary choirs that we have. I believe there's also a Spanish choir and there's even a Spanish cantor as well. Um, and you could uh, also send an email to Donna and she can pass that along to the, to the person who's in charge of that. But there are different, um, different ways to approach it. Um, you know, you don't have to be a great singer. Uh, you know, you don't have to be, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, a superstar. Um, it's, it's just, you just need to have a lot of heart and, um, need to understand how the music works. And it's also um, a good way to understand how the mass parts work. There's different mass parts that, that need to be sung and, and, and you get a inside look as to, as to how all that's laid out. So, but to be a cantor, it's just simply uh, have to be interested, have to have time um, to practice um, and um, uh, just be in touch with uh, Donna, who's, who's, uh, um, who heads up our music department, Donna Finney. So you can, um, you're speaking uh, uh, strictly for, for those who want to be uh, cantors, but you, yep. you're also- Cantors at the church. Yeah, yeah. you're also, um, but tell us a little bit about uh, the difference between how to become a choir member and how to become a cantor. Is there a <clears throat> yeah, um, so once the choir returns from its, um, you know, from our, uh, be, from our being on hold, um, maybe we'll return back to where we're having choirs, uh, but uh, choir is not, there's not much of a, um, a strict audition process at this time, um, but uh, it does require, um, you know, um, just participation, uh, practice. Uh, we, we used to practice one night a week and that was uh, either on a Wednesday or a Thursday uh, evening. Uh, and then we, we would practice before the mass started, maybe about a, about 30 minutes before the mass started. So, um, so that's how you would join and you can simply just email Donna or just, you know, take, take a look at, um, the, uh, uh, the schedules of, of, of when all of the choirs meet and you can just show up and, and grab a, grab a book and, and sing along. And you can even do that during the masses. You know, we encourage everyone to come to mass and, and uh, uh, if they have a breaking bread book that, they, that they've had from the past, use it. They're, they're mostly all the same songs. You can, you can, you can find them in the book. Um, or if you have your own Catholic, um, you know, singing, singing book from another church, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of it's, you know, in there. Um, we'll use, usually announce the songs. Um, you know, the cantor typically announces songs um, and uh, encourages the congregation to sing along. And um, you can simply find those in a book if you have a, a, a book and come to church. Um, as of right now, just, just come to church and sing along with us. Uh, and when the choirs reopen, you know, you'll be, you'll be ready to go. For those of us sitting in the pews, uh, not inclined to be uh, even any sort of semblance of good singer, or singer period, and we just want to know what a cantor is. Um, at yeah. parts of the mass, uh, do the, do we see the cantors? What what what? Exactly? Yeah. So, yep. Gotcha. Uh, so so the job of the cantor is to lead the congregation in song, um, and uh, typically how that works is 
um, the cantor is 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 using arm movements to let everyone know that it's their turn to come in and it's that you know and, and it's their turn to sing out and join everyone in in, in either refrains uh, or the psalm that we is is sung the cantor typically one of the primary jobs of the cantor is to lead the congregations in the psalms and all the mass parts that need to be sung um, and uh, it's important for the cantor to let everyone know that it's their turn to to come in and and, and uh, the cantor use arm uses arm movements to kind of cue everyone in on on that on all that and uh, there are some other parts that, that the cantor needs to do um, uh, announces the songs as i had mentioned before um, and then also make some announcements every once in a while that if there's something that needs to be announced um, Right. There are other things that the cantor does, and 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 uh, even part of the sacraments. Um, the cantor is 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 an important part of that. Um, for example, baptisms. Uh, there are parts of uh, the baptismal um, uh, ceremonies that need to be sung, and a cantor can be a very important part of that as well. Um, and uh, I've been very uh, lucky to be a part of um, a lot of different sacraments um you know ceremonies that uh, we you know encounter uh, as a catholic um on a regular basis like baptisms and, and weddings um and uh confirmations um and sadly funerals uh, but that's you know what we do it, it, it's it's part of life it's a spiritual fulfilling opportunity from a volunteer yeah. and singer standpoint i guess Absolutely. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, I find it very fulfilling to be a part of that. And, and, it, and it just brings me, you know, uh, joy and, 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 and it, it just brings me, um, you know, I just feel like I'm part of a family and, 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 and like I can offer something that I typically wouldn't offer. And, and you know, is, is, is someone who just went to church and, and sang along with songs. Typically, um, just in, in uh, brief here is my last question. Um, the, the cantor will sing the psalm from the, the ambo, uh, but there's the lectern uh, podium that, that you all are 90% of the time uh, from where you sing and, and, and make those announcements just to the uh, uh, right when people are looking at the uh, altar right, just to the right of the altar. Yes, so there's two different parts now. The, um, the cantor stand, uh, which is next to the piano in our church, um, <clears throat> that is uh, where I am most of the time uh, doing, um, doing the most of the mass parts, uh, all of the communion songs, all of the off offertory songs, uh, the entrance hymn, but the ambo uh, on the altar that is typically used for the psalm. Uh, right. We're temporarily not using that right now, but uh, when things, hopefully when things, you know, come back, we'll, we'll be able to use the ambo again. But uh, we're just trying to limit, you know, um, the use of that at the moment. But that is typically where I walk up and uh, sing the psalm in front of the entire church and lead the congregation in, in, in that, so. Okay, for anyone who uh, is interested in, um singing and uh, cantering, then the uh, email address is finnyd at sjwoodlands.com. Greg, um, appreciate you coming in this morning and, uh, and educating us a little. And thanks to everything you do for our parish. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. Have a good thanks. day. You too. Thank you.